Image is a self-hosted, open-source photo and video platform that gives you an experience similar to Google Photos without sending all your data to the cloud. Image has features like phone photo backup, object search and recognition, face detection, geolocation, and more that are all done locally. In this video, I'll be showing you how to set up Image in TrueNAS, but if you're looking for a standard Linux Docker tutorial, my friend Techno Tim has a fantastic video and walkthrough that you'll find linked down below. This video is not sponsored, but if you'd like to hire us or buy some swag from our store, you can do so by heading over to lawrencesystems.com. Now I'm doing this on TrueNAS 25.10, latest version available here in December of 2025. I do want to point out though that this is an AMD Ryzen 7 5700G and it has 16 cores available. I bring it up because I'm going to assign additional resources to image because that will directly impact how fast it's able to process all the images and apply the machine learning models to do facial recognition and object recognition in those images. The first step is creating the data sets where image is going to go. I prefer to organize things by having my main pool data set, then app storage, then underneath app storage is where I store all the data for the apps. So we're gonna click on this, and we want to add the first data set called image. Call yours whatever you like. We're going to leave this data preset as generic because the next one we want to create, and we're going to nest it under image, is going to be called data. And you want that set to apps. And then we'll hit save because this is where your photos are actually going to be stored. Then we're going to click back on image and we're going to add one more data set. It's up to you what you'd like to call this. We're going to call it PG data because this is a Postgres database. It is important that you leave this one at generic and click save. Now let's scroll over to apps, discover apps, click on image, install. I want the machine learning on and because I don't have a graphics card that supports CUDA such as Nvidia or ROCM, I do have a processor that will take advantage of OpenVINO. So we'll go ahead and click this. Database password, make sure you have a good password for this. For simplicity, I'm going to keep it simple. Same thing with the Redis password, but I do recommend choosing strong ones and recalling what you set those to in case you ever have to set image back up and you want to point it at the same database. Then we're going to scroll down here, leaving the port number the same, and we want to get into our storage configuration. First one is the data path. We're going to go to mount, dozer, app storage, image, data, then we'll scroll down here. We can leave this one as temporary directory because this is just a machine learning cache. It doesn't really matter. It's not something it really has to be tracked or backed up, but we do want to take care of our Postgres data storage by choosing host path, mount, dozer, app storage, image, PG data or Postgres data. Do check the automatic permissions. Now, you could have set the permissions manually. We'll get to that in a moment because I want to show you what permissions they set. But the automatic permissions applied to a general data set are perfectly fine. Now, I mentioned earlier we have 16 cores. I think assigning 12 cores seems reasonable. I'm fine with this much memory. It doesn't seem to cause a problem. If you think you need more when you're importing photos, go ahead. I've got plenty of memory in this system. But 12 seems good. That way I still have a few cores left over to do other things that may be running on this. Then click Install. Now image is up and running Then we can click on the web UI and run through the getting started. Fill out the admin registration, hit sign up, sign in with the credentials you created, choose your theme, definitely dark, language, privacy. I'm going to leave these at default. I'm not going to use Google Cast, that's up to you. Storage template. I like the storage template. Personally, I choose to use it. It's going to organize the files this way. You can click here for their documentation if you want to know more, but the default to me is fine. A good reminder to back up. I'll talk about that more shortly. And links to the App Store if you want to download and set up the mobile apps on your phones. Now, before we start importing photos and image, let's talk about backups and permissions. First permissions, here's the image data set. Here's that data set that we created called data, where it's going to be storing everything. And the permissions for this are your standard built-in administrators and user apps, because we chose the apps permission. If we look over here at PG data, you'll notice kind of an odd thing, and we'll edit this to show. It says net data and Docker, and we have the user as read, write, and execute. When we did auto, this set these permissions to allow Postgres to work properly. 
if you start messing with these or choose something other than net data and Docker, you will have problems. The user ID of 999 is what's required to have this working. Postgres uses that user, NetData uses that user. So it's showing you the name NetData, but it's really the same thing, just in case you're wondering why it says that. Now let's talk about backing up. Here is where all of your photos are stored. The Postgres database is where all the extra data about your photos is stored. When it does facial recognition, object recognition, that is all stored under the Postgres database under PG data and related to the file. So changes made or updates to that metadata of the file do not go in the file itself. They are just stored here in the Postgres database. In order to back up image in a true NAS fashion, you would go over here to data protection, and you'd set up replication tasks. Of note, because these are a series of nested data sets, make sure any snapshot or replication task that you have for those given data sets, such as the Dozer app storage image, are done recursively. Recursively means go in and get the other data sets that are nested under. I've seen people make the mistake where they have these nested, they only choose the top one, don't choose recursively, and it backs up this with nothing underneath it, which means none of your data went to the backup, or in this case, the snapshot. So make sure, and I have an entire video on CFS replication, you'll find link down below in the playlist that for your backups, you are setting this up. This is also why I mentioned remembering what the password was that you set, because if you were to set image backup and point it back at these same directories, it will require those passwords again to log into the services that are set up. Now, before we import photos and image, let's go ahead and make some administrative changes. Go to administration, jobs, and you can see, well, currently there's no jobs because we haven't imported anything. We want to manage, though, the concurrency. We assign this 12 cores. Don't set any of these higher than the number of cores available because that's not going to go well. But we'll put this at six and it's going to run several jobs simultaneously side by side. So I'll just put all these at six, but of course, adjust them to your liking. Facial recognition concurrency cannot be done in parallel because of the models that they chose. They have some details on that in their documentation. And I'm going to hit save. Now let's upload some photos. Let's start with my camping trip. Just going to do a select all, open, and I'll do this in real time. This is how fast it will upload all of the data. 116 photos and they're uploaded. Obviously I'm doing this on a local network, but now if we go over to the admin, administration, jobs, you will see, well, that it has, Smart Search is processing is still at 110, but if we look up here, it's already built all the thumbnails that fast. It's very quick. The parts that take more time, and we're watching this in real time, I'm not speeding it up, are the Smart Search and duplicate detection and face detection. These are where the models are running as well as the OCR, and they're gonna count down through and get them done well at the pace that they work. Obviously, if you have a graphics card that you pass through, that will make this much faster. But as you can see, this is really pretty reasonably fast. Now let's go over and see what image is doing on this side where it's got all the photos. And even while it's still processing, we can go explore. It's recognized me, it recognized my wife. It started recognizing different areas I was for each of these. Matter of fact, we can go over, explore on a map. And as we zoom in, this is where the started at my house, the first picture I took. And these are different spots where I took those photos. The closer we zoom in, within relative accuracy of the GPS in my phone, which it turned out in this area was sometimes not as accurate because I know I'm a little bit further down here, at least I think I was when I took some of these photos, but you get the idea. It also lets you do things such as click on the type of camera that was used and narrow it down. These were all taken with my Pixel 9 camera. So all of these photos are selected. Now, what if we wanted to make an album? Well, it's pretty easy. You can create and select photos that you already have to build an album, such as my vacation photos here. You can also upload directly to an album. So we'll call this Studio Project. And we'll hit select photos, but we're going to select from computer. Go back to my downloads. I already have the studio project ready. Once again, select all, open. And there are 73 photos in there. It's uploading those right away. I can actually click done as soon as it's done uploading the files. And we're almost there. There we go. Now, 
shows nothing in here, but if we go back, then go back to albums, it's processing them. Once again, if we were to go to the admin, you'd be able to jump into the queue and see where they're at. And this will cover the entirety of me building the studio. Yes, we built it pretty much from scratch, just like this. And it does do videos. And yes, the videos will autoplay. And you can watch this video to see how we got the board sound into my studio. Kind of noisy. Now, this is not a full tutorial for all the features of Image. I'm going to do that separately. But I do want to talk about external libraries. Let's go over here to Administration, External Libraries, hit the plus. We're going to choose my test user and create this external library. And we want to click Add, but we don't have a path. Now, let's go back to TrueNAS. I'm going to cancel this and show you how to put an external library that you have of existing photos and link them to your image. Now I have this data set created called My Other Photos that has some photos in it. This is a standard SMB share that was created with TrueNAS and has your standard SMB permissions. Let's edit those permissions because it doesn't have the app permission. And we want to do is add an item. The user is going to be apps. And permission type, we're going to set it to read only. I don't need image to have write access, because this is just reading these photos. As I mentioned, all the data and what it learns from these photos through the object recognition systems is going to be stored in the Postgres database. And because there's already some data in there, we want to apply the permissions recursively. So hit continue. If you had nested data sets under this, you would check this box as well. I do not, it's a single data set. And we want to save this access control list. Now we want to go over to apps, image, we want to edit, scroll down towards the bottom, and we want to choose additional storage. Host path that exists on the system. This is the mount path within image. We're going to use slash MNT slash my other photos. I like using underscores. Don't use spaces. You'll probably have problems. Choose that host path. My other photos. Scroll down to the bottom here and hit update. Image is back up and running. We're going to add the external path. It's the same path that we put at the top there, slash mount, slash my other photos, because this is how we mounted it within this Docker container. We click add, and then we click scan. All right, and we'll scroll down to the bottom here. So I believe that's where these will end up, because they're older photos. And there's our squirrel photos. Let's take a closer look. You can see that it says Canon EOS 50D, tells me what lens with the f-stop and shutter speed were as well as the ISO because it's still able to pull the metadata and it's storing it in Postgres. So even though we can't read and write to the image directory, it is able to grab that data, load it in there and attach it to that Postgres database. And if we were to go back over here to our search and search for squirrels, it is able to identify them. And apparently it thinks that's a squirrel too. And that's all I have for setting up image on TrueNAS. I have moved to this as my primary photo system here in December of 2025. Actually, I moved in November. I've been really impressed with it. I got about 55,000 photos I've imported. So I have a lot of thoughts on it. I'm going to do a separate video about image dedicated. I wanted to make this one for people that just want to set it up because it's relatively easy to get going on TrueNAS. Techno Tim, check out his video if you just want to see how to set it up in Docker. Thanks for watching. Hit me up in the forums at forums.lawrencesystems.com if you want to have a more in-depth discussion about this or other topics. Like and subscribe to see some of those new videos I have coming out. And reach out and say hi on the socials. You can find those at lawrencesystems.com. Thanks.